The Iowa Wild have started to get things back on track over the last week. Who has impressed and how has everyone looked? We discuss on today's episode of Locked on Wild. You're locked on wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello and welcome into yet another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Sports Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Wild your first listen every day of the week. And just as a reminder, you can find Locked On Wild wherever you listen to your podcast for absolutely no charge. On today's episode of Locked On Wild, our third installment of Keeping an Eye on Iowa, we're joined by Spoke Z to talk about how the Iowa Wilds have gotten themselves back on track recently. We'll talk about the goalies. We'll talk about the forwards that have impressed and the defensemen as well. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider. And as mentioned, we're talking to the one person outside of actual players on the team, most likely, who has uh, been literally keeping an eye on the Iowa Wilds. That, of course, is Spoked Z. Spoked, glad to have you back on. It's been a little while since the last time we've done this, and uh, since we're doing a little bit of a new thing with Locked on Wild this year, keeping an eye on Iowa, I could think of no one better to uh, come on and tell us, quite literally, uh, how the uh, Iowa Wild have been doing under your watchful eye. It's good to be back. I was just thinking, dude, like, I was trying to figure out how long it's been since I jumped on here, but uh, excited to make my return. Beard's looking phenomenal. <laughs> um, and I'm ready to uh, talk some Iowa here, dude. Yeah, and I don't know how you do it watching literally 20 games a day, but uh, you know, having a chance to keep an eye on an Iowa team that it looks like is, uh, is starting to get themselves back on track after a little bit of a slow start. Uh, what has gone well for Iowa over the last several games to allow them to to get back to the kind of hockey they wanted to be playing at the beginning of the year? Yeah, I mean, it's been a little bit better. Well, I mean, definitely a lot better than it was at the, the first few games there. Um, I think they've started to find some line combinations that have worked pretty well for them. Um, defense is still a work in progress, for sure. Uh, even me trying to like not lose it watching games like just some just they still have a a couple you know nights where they might have a little tendency to some quite questionable decision making back there lapses in coverage but um you know i think for the most part it's been the special teams that have started to really help them out a little bit not so much the penalty kill but definitely the power play i think they were over their first 20 something power plays um and then Sammy Walker, you know, got off the mark. And then I think he scored another power play goal that same game. And then ever since then, it's definitely been a lot better. Um, moving the puck pretty well. Um, you know, have a few different looks aside from just dropping into the slot and hoping, um, you know, there's someone there in the bumper or, um, you know, sending hopeful shots on net. But I think they're just starting to get a little bit of a groove playing together. Again, like I said, certain line combinations, certain guys that are starting to play together are looking like they're developing a little bit of chemistry because um, it is a little bit of a, a hodgepodge of different kind of players. Um, and I think I like where they're at right now, especially now that Nick Patan's returned. Um I mean, I sent you guys a message after his first game back. Like, he's way too good for the AHL. He seems like the classic, like, way too good for the AHL. Has to be on a real specific team, like, a certain structure to be, like, a permanent full-time NHL guy because he is, like, unbelievable down there. Um, he came back three assists in his game, uh, in his first game back. They come back from a two-goal deficit in the final minute and a half, tie the game, win in the shootout. Nick Batan scores a shootout winner. Uh, so I think that's just been a big boost too, but uh, mostly just consistency and uh, the offense definitely looks looks a whole lot better for sure. We saw Jesper Volstead get back between the pipes after uh, being scratched this past weekend due to an injury. 
And uh, I found it interesting because you uh, were keeping an eye on that game. And I believe the score was uh, four to four. And I think that game, correct me if I'm wrong, went to a shootout. But um, interesting there that from your estimation, he didn't get a whole lot of help in front of him um, throughout the course of the night, which led to the four goals given up. Other than that, how did he look? So this has been the theme in the three games that he's played in. So his record is 0-0-3. He has two shootout losses and one over. The game that you're talking about was the most absurd end to a game I've seen in years, where, first of all, they did him absolutely no favors in the first period. Uh, they allowed 20 shots on net. I think they had they gave up. They took four minor penalties. So I think they scored on two of them. And, like, I mean, he was just getting peppered. And then he just locked it down. I think he saved the next 25 shots, something like that. And then um, let in one that, again, just a complete lapse in coverage, like no one in front of the net. I have no idea who – I can't remember who it was that turned the puck over from the corner, but, like, just served the pizza right up the middle, eight feet in front of the net. Like, he didn't have a chance. But he was the only reason that they didn't get – blown out in that first period by five, six goals. Like, he's making 10 bell saves left and right. And I thought he was just good the whole game, like, real solid, because that game could have got out of hand real quick. And then in overtime, I could not believe what I was watching. Like, they have a sequence in the in the defensive zone where I can't – was it Grand Rapids? I can't even remember. I was I, – I blacked out. I was just like, I, can't, I just – I don't know what – I tweeted the video of it. Like, they have the sequence where they're just getting hemmed in all of a sudden, Sammy Walker, like, slips and slide tackles Wallstead. Wallstead loses his stick, can't get up. Sammy Walker's stuck in the net. So Wallstead's literally on all fours. They somehow keep the puck to the outside, don't allow a shot on net there. They finally get up. Wallstead can't get his stick back. Finally gets his stick back 10 seconds later. Puck hasn't left the zone. And then from the – I almost swore. Didn't swear, though. Uh, from the wall um, – who was it? God – I can't even remember. Oh, it was Hicketts. Joe Hicketts slides literally from like, I mean, 15 feet slide, 15 foot slide into Wallstead, into the post, knocks the goal off. They get awarded a penalty shot. They score on the penalty shot. And, oh. and that's how he lost his third game. So he's got two shootout losses and an overtime loss. He So right now, I think he's 0-0-3. He's got a 315 goals against and an 893 save percentage. And that doesn't tell, I would love for them to have like the underlying numbers for goalies, like goal saved above expected, high danger saves. Cause like every game he's making several. And I mean, if it wasn't for him, they'd probably be losing those games by five, six, seven goals. And he's just getting shelled. And it's again, like it's the kid's first year in North America, first year playing North American pro hockey. And like, I just watched them over and over. They did the same thing last year in front of McIntyre, too. Uh, a lot more often, like consistently almost every game. And McIntyre was fantastic. And he's been a lot better uh, lately, too. But um, they just, like, puke all over themselves right in front of Wallstead. And you're just, like, watching these goals. He's giving up. And you're like, what's this kid supposed to do? Like, ah. it's um, – it's it was – I was – I couldn't believe that, that last one, that Wallstead – that last loss for Wallstead. Because, like – he, like, he has to be sitting there like, what the hell am I supposed to do with this? Like, I first game back from injury, too, and you just get, sh again, 20 shots against the first period when you come back from injury, and then you just lock it down, and they still puke all over themselves, lose them in front of the net, tie game, overtime, you get slide tackled by your own forward, and then someone knocks the goal off, like, from 15 feet away, you get awarded a penalty shot against, and they score, of course. Like, so I think all in all, like, there have been a couple goals against where you're like, eh, you probably want to have that one, like, couple uncharacteristic ones where you know like i think there's been two maybe off the top of my head that i can remember him just kind of like giving up a bad rebound instead of just like catching it or um you know goals from deep that really the screen wasn't crazy but um all in all like the stats don't look good but i think he's been very good um and again it's just like some of the situational stuff it's just like how is this even possible like it's legitimately unbelievable and like they're not even giving them good goal support until like the third period the first two games i think they came back the last minute and a half um so again like that's the stuff with iowa same stuff last year it's just like consistency and decision making and just complete 
like losing the focus in their own end it like you just see it sometimes when you're sitting there like I, what and it, it, it's like the worst times too it's like just terrible timing and even stuff like the discipline where they're just like taking these ridiculous penalties and it's like dude what are you doing um and while that's just faced the brunt of a lot of it but like i don't know how many kids start off their north american pro career oh oh and three with two shootout losses and an overtime loss Jeez, that is uh poor kid it's chaotic i think is the best way to put it i mean i i can't Which feels even... about right for iowa they, they are pretty much like all chaos they still are <laughs> lunatics like they at least right now they're not leading the league in penalty minutes like they were last year i think last year they led the league in penalty minutes by 150 mostly because cramorosa and mermis probably took about 12 game misconduct <laughs> for for abusive official or unsportsman like it's unbelievable <laughs> <laughs> last year they were they were nuts like they were like i couldn't like it was honestly i couldn't even get mad because it was so funny just like second period missed icing call mermis is like i'm gonna chop that ref's head off and he's just just going at it and the ref's like all right you're gone like but it was like every other game it felt like i was like dude stop doing that it's crazy well uh at least you know at least he's able to try to overcome a penalty shot in overtime, which is the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. Um, but yeah, hopefully that doesn't uh, doesn't end up being the case all season. But I guess kind of the outside the box way to think of it is that the crazier situations he has to contend against now, the more that they don't surprise him, the further up the ladder he gets. I think he's facing a lot of adversity right now, and that's good for him. I mean, in, in like when I say a lot, he's played three games, and it's not like, yeah, this is. I mean, this is about what you expect, kind of from like AHL. And like the thing is too with Iowa, you know, Beckman got called up, Fogarty's been called up, Patan was out, Mikey Milne's hurt, he's coming back soon. I found that out. Um, Mermis was hurt to start the year. Hicketts got hurt, and then he got called up. I think Mason Shaw, the captain, was called up, and I don't know if he's going back ever. Uh, Cremorosa gets called up, like so. It's the same thing last year where they just don't really ha they haven't had a consistent lineup for any. They played I think nine games so far. Um, they haven't had a lineup like you, you just don't. Vlad first off played one game and quit. Um, so he's gone. That sucks. I, that wouldn't really hurt. He just faced a little adversity and bounced. Uh, so he's in Russia. So we'll see if he ever comes back or ever plays in this organization ever again. But the going got tough, and he said, "See ya." I'm going back to Russia, so that's where he's at. Um, so it's just been a weird start, but I guess not to – I mean, last year was a whole other level. Like, I've never seen a season like that for an AHL team with, like, just the unpredictability. So um, – but again, like, it, a lot of these players are young too, so it's different in that way where there weren't as many young guys on the team last year. So um, – but, yeah, just a little unpredictability. They haven't had the same lineup game to game. But um, like I said before, there have been a few line combinations that I think that Tim Arm has tried, and he's probably – liking a whole lot right now and there are a few bright spots so um yeah no i think they're starting to uh they're starting to play better and, and look like what we more like what we expected okay well let's uh let's talk about some of those bright spots uh after the break because uh, i want to ask you about a couple of guys that you know have been picking up their performance here over the uh, last week or so and so we'll continue our iowa chat with spoked z next here on locked on wild our next partner has a product I use literally every day of the week, and I started taking AG1 because it simplifies your morning vitamin and supplement routine. With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This delicious blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, everything you could possibly want. And it is lifestyle friendly. Whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, AG1 is a small micro habit with big benefits. It's one thing you can do every single day to take care of yourself. And it is tried and tested. Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews. And right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. 
And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild, once again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. For your second listen, make sure you check out the Locked on Sports Today podcast. From the games that matter to the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked on can provide. Locked on Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Spoke Z joining us for another edition of the Keeping an Eye on Iowa series, host of Judd's Buds on the Soda Pod. And uh, Spoke, let's just go through some of those bright spots you mentioned. I want to ask you about Sammy Walker, who is leading the team in points right now with 10 through 9 games. He's got five goals on the season so far. Uh, what have you seen from him that you like so far? And... Could he be a player that potentially, maybe not this year, maybe within the next couple of years, could he be a player that makes an impact uh, on the NHL roster at some point? Yeah, I mean, so far through the first nine games, he's been probably their best player. Obviously, the points show that. Um, I think the next guy behind him is Chafee with six. Um, and Chafee's just come on now. He was snake bit to start of the year, and now he is torching. Um but yeah, no, Sammy Walker's just been really impressive. I think, again, like that power play was completely dead. Uh, and then he kind of broke the ice there. And all of a sudden, it was him on the puck half the time on those power plays, scoring goals. Um, you know, I think his shooting percentage is probably higher than it's going to end up. But um, I mean, he's putting himself in really good positions to score. The kid's got wheels, too. Like, if he gets a break, like, you're not catching him. Um, but yeah, no, I think he's just looked like a different player than he than he was in Minnesota. Like, I think he's probably more of a go-to guy than he was with the Golden Gophers in college. Like, that star-studded friggin' lineup. Um, and he's kind of like the energy guy with skill, uh, probably playing the middle of the lineup there, more of just like a leader type. But, like, now he's getting a chance to get all of those grade-A um, minutes. And it's, I mean, it's working out for him. He's grabbing this opportunity and running with it for sure. So, I mean, I, how much of that's going to really translate to the NHL, I don't know. I think... Right now, he's just kind of riding the, the wave, which, I mean, that just works for some guys, and they kind of ride that wave all the way to the show. But um, I just think he's just been a different player than he was in college, just definitely more, like, assertive, demanding the puck, and, like, really confident in the offensive zone, where he's just not afraid to try anything, um, which is a little bit different than I expect from a first-year pro under Tim Army. Um, but it's been really fun to watch, and Again, like a lot of the reason that they are now finding success on the power play is because he's out there so for so much of it. Um, the shots looking phenomenal, which I didn't see a whole lot of when he was in Minnesota. Um, and I think the defensive effort there is too, where he's kind of, I know one of his goals, he forced the turnover at the blue line and then again was off to the races and no one was going to catch him. So he's just been effective in all three zones. And like, I think, you know, not, I we can keep talking about the power play, but. Um, you know, it's like it's that the offense, like they started scoring goals. It was like he, like when he scored that first one, it was like a spark. So, um, he's our go to guy. He's looked really, really good on a line, whether it's, um, in the first few games before the call ups, it was like Beckman, Fogarty, and then Walker. And then he was playing a little bit of center. He went back to the wing. Now he's playing a little bit with Mitchell Chafee, and that's a really good combo where, um, you know, Chafee's just a sniper. That kid's shot is a joke. Um, but I think he's just kind of made it work wherever he ends up in the lineup, and I think that's, like, huge for him. So right now, I think he's riding the wave. He's been a spark for them offensively for sure. And, um, you know, again, through nine games, probably been their, their best, at least most noticeable player on the ice. So um, really, really hot start. I don't know if I expected this from him off the start. I thought he'd be okay. Um but, I mean, I didn't really know. Like, I don't think he was ever a point-per-game player in college. So, right now he's got 10 and 9. So, um, no, good for him, though. Really good to see it. And uh, especially considering, like, they got this guy pretty much for free because he didn't want to sign in Tampa. So, homegrown kid. 
you know, you'll take all the success stories you can get for sure. Absolutely. Um, I want to talk to you about another guy who is new to the organization this year and uh, has four goals in his last, I believe it's three games, including a hat trick uh, a few games ago. That's uh, Ty Roning. Uh, Roning, I think, I hope. Um, what does he bring to the lineup as somebody who is playing with this Iowa team for the first time? Yeah, an interesting one for sure. He's looked pretty good too. He's played mostly in that – he's either been in that third-line role or somehow Brandon Baddock's the left wing on that second line, and he's been there too. Uh, Baddock is just a complete lunatic. Like He's <laughs> playing second-line minutes, and like his offense is him skating like a 1,000 miles an hour into people, winning the puck, and then just like throwing it into the middle, and then like challenging someone to a fight. It's unbelievable to watch. Um, hey, TMZ, by the way, TMZ, Brandon Baddock, punching graphs of the NHL preseason. Um, but no, Ronnie's been good. The, the one game he had a hat trick, he had two power play goals, and then he scored a shorthanded goal. A um, couple Jeez. really nice shots. Interesting that New York kind of just said no thanks. Um, I mean, he's a bit on the older side for a prospect. He's a 2016 seventh round draft pick of the Rangers, but I mean, had his best year by far last year. Uh, with Hartford, I think he had like 40-something points, maybe 39, 40 points. Um, it was looking like he was starting to come on there, but I don't know. I guess they kind of decided they had enough prospects, which, okay. Um, and there really wasn't the spot for him, so doesn't sign there and ends up ends up in Iowa. But he's making the, he's another kid. He's just kind of making the most of his opportunity. He doesn't really do one thing like at an elite level. He kind of just plays a pretty well-rounded game, finds himself in really good areas of the ice, and when he gets opportunities, he's, for the most part, taking them. Uh, the one thing I like about him a lot is he's not afraid to shoot. So, um, you know, it's not like he's not going end-to-end -end flash. Like, he's just kind of a guy that just, like, makes it work. And I think that's just because he's a pretty smart hockey player. Again, like I said, like, he finds himself in all the right areas. And he makes himself useful in the defensive end. So, like, the coach is always going to have time for you. And you, you're always going to get some good looks as long as you kind of just do the right things. And, um, you know, I think he's carried himself well. And, I'm noticing him on a lot of shifts. So, and again, like he's got those points. I mean, three of those goals came in one game, but, um, you know, I think ha, Iowa will take all the hat tricks they can get. So, uh, no, definitely a good start to, for him in Iowa. Um, you know, we'll see if he ever gets to the NHL. Hopefully he can be a kid that eventually earns a call up. So, I mean, it's not going to be this year. And realistically, it's probably a long shot. I think he's probably not even on an NHL deal. He, I'm guessing he's on an NHL deal that I think about it, but, um, no, it's just been a pretty good start for him. I like I like a lot of the things that he's doing with the puck. Again, smart player, and he's been effective in all three zones. So um, pretty good start for him, too. And the next one I was going to ask you about, you you combo plattered the question just perfectly. I was going to ask you about Brandon Baddock, and uh, you, you got that in there just perfect. So I think what we'll do is we will move to defensemen. We'll try to figure out kind of what's going on with this Iowa Wild decor, and we'll talk about some of those defensemen pro, uh, prospects that the uh, Iowa Wild currently have as we finish today's episode of Lockdown Wilds after this. Final segment of today's episode of Lockdown Wild. Again, thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. For your second listen, make sure you check out Judd's Buds on the Soda Pod getting a full recap and lowdown on everybody in the Minnesota Wilds organization and prospect system. Like I said, there's nobody better at keeping an eye on everybody, whether it be playing overseas, playing here in the States. Smoke Z's got it on lock. Uh, let's talk decor for the Iowa Wilds. You mentioned it's been a little bit of an adventure so far. So what has been the biggest issue for those uh, wild or Iowa wild defensemen uh, so far in the season. Yeah. I mean, I think again, there it's all three of the new pairs, um, you know, not having Addison back there is obviously huge, especially on that power play where, I mean, like Hicketts is a decent power play quarterback back there. Um, but I mean, Addison is just a whole other level. Plus the element of a right shot helps too. Um, I mean, I think they're still finding their way. I mean, Mermis was hurt to start the year. Um, and from there, you know, Damon Hunt, he's been playing a lot with Hicketts, which has been pretty good. Uh, Simon Johansson, I've actually liked a lot, like not necessarily because he's been the best defenseman back there, but 
I was kind of wondering how much of the skill, how much of the confidence that he kind of had last year um, when he was in Finland would kind of translate over here. And I think he's been fairly confident with the puck. I've seen him make a lot of really good plays, especially in the offensive zone. I mean, like, again, the kid's calling card is, you know, the skating ability, the skill, and definitely an offensive defenseman. Um, and that a lot of times, especially if the kid's coming over from Europe, kind of gets washed out right away in the AHL where it's kind of just like a no-nonsense, like, kind of league where he's not a big dude. He's not the toughest dude in the world. Um, he does have a little bit of a snarl to it, which I like, and I've seen come out a few times, which, I, again, I think that's been a big positive for him too. And I think he's actually played fairly hard in the defensive zone. Um, but he's just been confident, like, trying things, and it's working for the most part. He's got a couple points, like – um, scored his first goal from the parking lot with an empty netter, like got absolutely rocked and like rimmed one off the wall. And it just somehow went in. Like he was literally in the corner of the ring. Like can't be farther away. Got his first AHL goal. So that was good to see. But um, no, I mean, I think he's been pretty good. So I think again, like none of the pairs that they have right now were together last year. You've got O'Rourke, his technically a second full season in the AHL after the COVID year. Damon Hunt's first full year after playing seven games in, uh, in that COVID year. Um, and now Johansson's over here. So you have three young kids and then three veterans and – or four veterans, really. Um, so they're still just getting used to the league, but, like, it's just been the inconsistencies. It's been just making mistakes at times. You really can't make them, and, like, at the worst possible time. Um, and a, a part of that's just – it's the AHL, and that's yeah. why they're in the AHL. Um, but I think honestly, for the most part, the kids have been like pretty good. The one pair that they've stuck with the whole time for the most part has been O'Rourke and Schuster, and it's been real good. Like O'Rourke, you don't really notice him. Um, I mean, that kid gets the hardest minutes. Him and Schuster are out there for every single team's top line, every PK, uh, every D zone start. It's O'Rourke and Schuster, and like O'Rourke again, he's just fitting right in, like he did the second half of the year that he played in the AHL a couple years ago. Um, so while he's not putting up like points and he's not like doing anything super flashy or noticeable, he's just doing his thing, like exactly what he's probably going to do when he does make it to the NHL eventually, which I firmly believe he will. And he'll have a long NHL career, even though no one's going to talk about him. He's tough. He plays hard. He hits hard. Um, he's hard on the on walls. He's hard against big players. He's right in front of wall stack, clearing creases. Like, so I've liked O'Rourke a lot, even though it hasn't been flashy. And, um, and then, I mean, Damon Hunt too, like, I was very curious to see how he would play in the AHL because, again, I talked about this ad nauseum, whether it was here or any other podcast I've been on or my own. Like, the way Damon Hunt played in the WHL, especially last year, like, it was, it's not going to – like, you can't do that in pro hockey where he's just, like, doing whatever he wants, bullying people. Him and Matej Chuck, the best pair I've ever seen in junior hockey, they were just, like, playing forward and defense. Like, you can't do that. And he's actually just played a very controlled game. He's out there getting, like, really good power play minutes and – um, he looks really good too, and he's been fair, he's been pretty good. And again, all of them are other than O'Rourke are a little bit inconsistent in the defensive zone, but um, with Hunt and Johansson, I think they've played a lot more kind of confident, and controlled than I than I thought they would. Um, so I think the kids have been actually pretty good. Um, and now Mermis is healthy again, and that's a big that's a big plus for them too. So just kind of ironing out what those real pairs are going to look like and kind of balancing again, like they do want to win. The goal is always to win, but it is still a developmental league. So um, probably trying to balance that too. There's just been, been a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a challenge, but I mean, again, that's the AHL. Yeah, that's uh, you're going to find that um, to finish up today. I wanted to give an opportunity for you to talk about two of your favorites players in the uh, the wild system and uh, that of course being Carson Lambos and um, Kyle Masters and so uh, just just talk a little bit about what you've seen from those guys so far uh, to wrap up here today so I'll start with Lambos um, I messaged you guys last night I went back and he's playing right now too uh, last game I clocked him because they don't I have to I'm not gonna pay for like in stats like three grand and that's yeah, like you can like track all the. They it's really if someone pays for it, it's definitely worth it. Um, I'm not going to do it. Um, but so if I ever have games where I kind of feel like tracking ice time, I just do it myself. Where as soon as they hop over, I'm marking the time, whatever. Um, first period, nine minutes. 
Second period, took a penalty, still played seven and a half. And then the third period, he played like 12.30, including the last three and a half minutes of the game. Now, there were like stoppages in there that like helped him out, but I think he finished around 26, 27 minutes. And like, he was like, I'm sitting, he got first start of the game. And I remember like, because I did, when I was watching it live, I didn't catch, wasn't watching it closely. And, but I just remember being like, man, my most is like, He's been out. I feel like he's been on every shift that I've like been paying attention. Because again, like I have got six games going, so I'm like looking over like Lambo's on the ice again. And I look at the other game. I look like that was like two minutes ago. He's still on the ice. That's weird. Uh, no points plus two, two pims, two shots. And I was like, first start of the game, like, a couple of these dudes had three points. And then I went back and watched it again. I was like, oh, he was on the ice for over half of the third period, just like shutting it down. And like he killed two and a half minutes of a double minor. Like just like didn't leave the the zone. He was just like gassed. But the kid played 12 and a half minutes of the third period and, like, was just a beast. But I think um, I didn't know that Ben Zlotti, who's usually their first PP guy, uh, I didn't know he was coming back. He's, like, 20, 21 years old, which I didn't even know. He, I thought he was already an overager, so I had no idea that he was coming back. So he's been pretty much getting a lot of the power play time. But Lambos, I think, has just been really good. A little bit more quiet, maybe, than people would have expected. He's still right around a point per game. He might even be over it. I don't even know. Um, but that Winnipeg team is real good, and he's a big part of it. Obviously, he's the captain. Um, still, some things you see, you're like, eh, like that's probably why he's still here in juniors. That's where you can, like, iron out just a little bit of decision making, defensive zone sometimes, like when to go and like when to just stay home. Um, but man, that kid's so fun to watch in the offensive zone, though, with like with the puck, the lateral move. It like just he is a treat to watch. So I think it's been all in all a really good start, if a, not like a little bit quieter than maybe we would have expected or hoped. But um, again, it's a, he's also just playing all these minutes and like the dirty, hard minutes too. And uh, they're playing Red Deer right now, who's undefeated. And uh, the two first place teams, and I think they took three or four minor minor penalties in the first period. And Lambos was out there killing. Like I think he might have played 13 minutes in the first period tonight again. <laughs> he was just on the ice the entire time. <laughs> it's like this kid's a freak. Um, so I think again, all in all, like fairly quiet. But um, I've liked a lot of what I've seen from Lambos so far. Um, again, considering he hasn't necessarily been their their power play quarterback on that first unit there, but. Um, I don't know, he's, he's just a really good prospect, but I think he's probably in the right spot. I think we were all maybe wondering if he'd go to Iowa. I think this is where he should be right now. Um, but, yeah, no, good start, just a little quiet. Um, and, I mean, we could do a whole episode on Kyle Masters. <laughs> we could. We could. We literally could. I went back and I watched another one of his games, like, from a few games ago, and, like, I was clipping shifts and I was like, I can't, I might run out of room on my, like every shift, he was just like a beast. Like all year last year, I was shouting from the rooftops. Like if this kid can just get traded out of red deer to a team that's high octane transition, uh, defenseman activating with the puck, like, and he gets these looks like, all of these micro stats where he's the like the best defense for the WHL in, like he's in the 95th percentile in like every single underlying stat, like then the points are going to go along with it. And he's already one point away from last year's total in 50 fewer games. He's got last two games. I think he's got three points in each. He's getting power play looks like the kid is so nasty and he's so fun to watch where he has to be, I was, telling my buddy Keanu this might be NSFW for this. I don't know. I'm just going to say it. Uh, he's like every forward's like wet dream if, of a defenseman where you probably don't even need to go below the circle. You're never going to retrieve have to retrieve a puck. As soon as it gets chipped in, you can start skating the other way, getting ready for transition because Masters is going to retrieve that puck. He's going to evade every four checker and he's going to lug the mail himself. And he beats everyone up the ice and he's just going to find you in great AI. So like he's a transition demon he is such a good skater, not necessarily laterally. That's like the big area of growth for him. Or if he's going to be, if he's going to produce points, if he's going to be a full time NHL player, he's got to get a little bit more dynamic with the puck in the offensive zone instead of just like settling for like dumping it down the wall or like I call it death corner, like where the blue line meets the wall. Like he just like lives there and doesn't move left to right like at all. He's just going to either going to go down and like he's a psychopath too. So like he happily is just like, 
eating hits along the wall and he still has the puck though like he's just like getting rocked but he just like doesn't lose his feet and he just like still has it shooting at the net from like no angle um but his shots are up he's getting way more offensive looks he plays a little bit on the left side play a little bit on the right side and he's probably playing like 27 minutes a night and he's just such a fun player to watch and it's like just so good to see the points actually coming now um because I mean, he was th- he was this good last year, but now he just plays in a system on a team that like his game is perfectly suited for the Kamloops Blazers. They are like a miserable team to play against. It's all transition, it's all activation. They play a thousand miles an hour, and he just plays with his hair on fire. And on top of that, he's like 5'11", maybe one eighty, one ninety. He kills guys. Like he lines people up and murders them. Like he throws some of the nastiest hits. Like you know what, like. Usually a big hit. It's like you're usually you're tra- traveling at like decent speed. He'll be at a standstill and just stand someone up, and they they they're flying like f- several feet in the air. Like it is gorgeous. <laughs> it's unbelievable. So he's like super strong. Um, but he's I'm again. I'm just like glad to see the points are finally there because like again like he's been this good and now now he's just playing on a team where it's like perfectly suits him offensively. Um, and he's just been incredible this year. Like. Their best defenseman by far, and Bank here is lighting it up too on that team. Um, so I'm just happy for the kid. Like he's now finally getting the shine he deserves, and he's again he's one point away from last year's total in like 50 fewer games. So there you go. Yes. Um, but yeah, no, both of them strong starts. But like Mass has just been unbelievable, and I've been saying it for years, but now it's finally happening, and people are noticing. Yeah, people people are taking notice as rightfully they should, and uh, it's just it's fun to keep an eye on all these different players, whether it be Iowa or otherwise, which is where the name came from. So appreciate uh, you joining here today. Spoke to uh, take a, keep us, have us help us. There we go. Help us keep an eye on all these different players. And uh, we will uh, do this again, a little further down the road. That is going to conclude today's episode of lockdown wild. So uh, make sure if you have not already to hit subscribe, on YouTube, turn notifications on and hit follow on your favorite podcast platforms so you don't miss out on any Wild-related content here at Locked on Wild. We are keeping you up to date on all things Minnesota Wilds with new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked on Sports Podcast Network.